When Billings Central Athletic Director Shell Hanser handed over the reins of the Rams boys basketball program to Jim Sturgar, not even he could have foreseen all the success coming their way. Now Sturgar is thankful to have the position for over a decade. I caught up with him in our recent one-on-one -on -one to discuss basketball, his high school days, his college days, and life outside of the game. All right, Jim, well, thank you for joining me. Um, let's let's kind of go back to where it all began, back in high school at Anaconda. Uh, you were fortunate enough to get to play in a state championship in 1989. Um, tell me a little bit about that experience. Well, I mean, there's it's a, it's a blur. I mean, you know, thinking back that far now, but uh, the things that stick in my mind was, I remember laying in my uh, motel room and, and my sister running in the night before, after we won our semifinal game against a really good Mile City team. Um, she says, oh my gosh, you're in the state championship. And then, and then it hit me then. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're playing for the state championship. And uh, it was a really cool experience. And a lot, of good, a lot of my best friends that we've been playing basketball with each other for years and years and years and got along so well and um, did everything together, every sport together. And it was just kind of cool to, to, to be in the state championship. And, and in football, we, we came up short in the semifinal game. And, um, but in basketball, we you know had another chance. So it was, we had a great class, great class of guys that were seniors and uh, some underclassmen that were really good too. So it was fun. You were obviously good enough to go play at the next level. Um, started at Tech, went to Western. Explain to me the reason for transferring and ultimately how that worked out in your favor. Well, one of my favorite guys I ever had as as a coach was Rick Dessing at Tech, and uh, you know he recruited me. I, I fell in love with what he did as as a coach and. You know, playing for him, I was like, man, you know, my freshman year in college, I was like, I want to do what he does. And just, you know, thinking of, you know, graduate at Tech, um, that's not the, the avenue of coaching. Um, I wanted to be, a, you know, he basically inspired me to be a coach and a teacher. So I had to go to him and, and tell him, you know, that. And he, he agreed that I needed to transfer and go to basically one of the best, you know, small colleges with teaching. And, and that's Western. And that's their rival at Tech. And so that kind of you know, he inspired me to, to go, to leave him. So it was, it was bittersweet for both of us. And, uh, but that's what I did and had a great experience at Tech. And then, you know, going to Western was, was three great years of playing there and, and meeting a lot of good people and uh, coaches that, have, that are still coaching today. You didn't waste any time after that getting into coaching. And you, you mentioned earlier to me that you almost started coaching alongside Steve Keller there in, uh, in Helen, I think it was. So, um, what happened right out of high school that led you to Ronan? Well, or out of I, college, excuse me. I, I, uh, my first stop was, um, I was a freshman coach in Anaconda, and Alan Green gave me my big break. He had called me and said, hey, you want to be my freshman coach? And I said, I would love to do that. You know, this is what I want to do. And, and then I did that for a year, and then the next year, Steve Keller, I got to know him uh, at Helena High, and he, you know, he's one of the best, you know, Hall of Fame guy. And, and I, I just wanted to learn more, and, and, and I was going to go coach at Helena High, and then... I was still trying to look for a teaching job and um, had some interviews that year and uh, got picked up late, like October, in Ronan. So <clears throat> I ended up leaving before I got started, basically, with Steve at Helena High and went up to Ronan and became a teacher and started helping Mark Salser as a, as a, as a coach. You coached a couple pretty good players there, uh, Nate Harris, Matt Lugkey, Ronan. Played for another state championship. What sticks out from that 2002 title game? Well, we had um, a group of guys that really gelled and got along, and uh, we had some really good players. I had Zach, Zach Pitts was a great point guard for us for three straight years. He was just an uh, all-state point guard. He played with Matt Ludke and Shane Coleman and those guys who really got us going on, in the right direction. Um, and then, you know, I just, that, that state championship game flew by so fast. You know, and, and we had expectations of playing in that title game. And, uh, you know, with, with some, some guys, you know, leaving other teams to go play on Browning's team, not mentioning any names, but um, <laughs> Mike Chavez. Uh, anyway, it was, <clears throat> it really, it made us motivated. And, but we got to him and got to that team and they were a really good team and just ran into a buzzsaw. After Ronan <clears throat> made your way here to Billings, um, how did that come about? And, uh, you know, what, what kind of stood out about your tenure there with senior? Uh, well, Mark Solser, again, he was, he was the, the key there. He, you know, was in Ronan uh, as a coach, and then he left to come to Billings. He was at Billings Senior Coaching, and the, oh, the vacancy came open. He called me and said, would I be interested? And I said yes, and, and 
you know, nine years later, um, you know, I, I left senior and uh, came over to Billing Central. I think this is what, year 29, you said? Overall, overall 29 years of being assistant and a head coach combined. I think this is 24 as a head coach. So in those 24 years as a head coach, um, you guys have made, what, six title games here at Central, the one in Ronan, um, so, and you come away with a couple state championships there. Are those memories from winning the state championships the ones that stick out or are those ones that you lost? Um, do those hurt a little bit more? Well, they definitely hurt uh, a lot more, um, <clears throat> but I remember the two wins and uh, those wins, championships are kind of for all those other teams that didn't have a chance. Um, even Matt Ludke, Shane Coleman, you know, those kids when they were seniors, um, they were, they were, they didn't even make it to the state team. Uh, tournament. They were 19 and three, and a really good basketball team that I coached. Uh, it, and those two were at my first state championship. They came and watched that game and, and shared that experience with me. And that's what it means. I mean, to be a coach is to have all these guys that are still part of your family and and backing you. And we, back, you know, talk and, and keep in contact. But um, yeah, I, I try not to remember how many losses there were. I know there's a bunch, uh, but I do know that there's two championships. So that's what I remember the most. Well, just over two years ago, you surpassed 300 career wins. Um, Got to be coming up on 400 here shortly. A lot of good players must go into into that many wins, right? Yeah, that that, and then you got to keep coaching for a long time to get to it. Some team, some coaches get to it fast because they've been blessed with great teams. Um, you know, it seems like I've just started coaching, and I don't feel that old. I don't feel like I've been coaching, you know, 29 years. I think it's crazy to think of that, but. Um, yeah, you got to have some really good players. and You're not going to win games. You're not going to win championships without good players. And if, if I can be there just to help them and guide them a little bit, then that's my job. Um, myself and I, you have to have great staff. You have to have great assistant coaches. And I know our staff at, C at Central here, is, is we've been together for a long time. And then I look at our staff that I had at senior high, and we have, you know, Charlie Johnson, who's a head coach. You know, Jim Wilsey, who's been a head coach since then. Um, we have, you know, Drew Haas, who's now the head coach at Billings Senior now. Jason Federico, who's helping coach up at, at Rocky, and he's been a head coach himself. So um, just you have to have guys that, that, are, that are willing to put in that extra time. And, and right now we have a very stable um, coaching staff here at Central. And uh, it, it means a lot to the, the kids and, and myself as a head coach. You mentioned those two, you know, three, four guys have really been around with you for a long time. How did you assemble that staff? Because I know some of those guys, you know, they're, they're not much older than I am, and, and they were pretty good hoopers in their day. So how did you assemble those guys, and how do you get them to stick around? Uh, well, um, you know, Danny Dessen played for me. Um, he's always wanted to get into coaching, and uh, the timing was right, you know, for him. Um, uh, Connor Cunningham is an alumni here, and has always wanted to coach, and, and really got to know him through this job and and him being my assistant so um, and Joe Keller is our freshman coach who has been kind of a, a big-time Catholic school member uh, and supporter and um, he, he wanted a coach and it, he fell into that job and then Bryce Hawbaker played for me here at Central so and he was looking for to get into coaching so it all worked out to where the staff we have now that's kind of how it worked out um, but like I said you know we've had other staff members here before that, um, you know, um, you got uh, other guys that are now coaching as assistant coaches, maybe at other schools, but they're still in coaching. From the outside, you're an awful intense person on the sidelines. Um, I know one of the things you've, you've said countless times is don't confuse passion with anger. Could you kind of expound on that for me? Well, you know, one of my favorite mentors as a coach was Rick Majerus down in Utah. And, uh, you know, if you spend enough time around guys that, that you, you know, from the outside, you might think they're crazy or, you know, um, they're, they're anger issues or whatever. But um, he was the guy I got that from. Um, and he used to talk and, and write about how coaching and, and athletics brings out the worst in people and the best in people. And, uh, and he talked about how you shouldn't confuse passion with anger. And I think I'm just passionate about, you know, being inspired from day one by Rick Dessing to, to, to be a very intense guy to get, you know, help have basketball help these kids um, learn life lessons and 
it's not always going to be pretty out there for these kids and, and basketball is going to be the easy fun thing. So what can I do as a mentor to prepare them to handle bigger things in their life? Basketball is a sport. Basketball is fun. Um, these kids know that I care about them and from the outside, you know, if I'm on a kid or ripping a kid up and down, you know, you know the outside doesn't know what's going on on the inside. So we talk about the man in the arena quite a bit. And, uh, and, and the, you know, the parents that, that know and have gotten to know us, they, they, they trust us with that. And, and uh, over the years, it's been, it's been wonderful. I've had great, great experiences with all our guys. And um, it isn't for everybody, um, but life isn't, isn't easy. And uh, that's anything I can do to help them prepare them for that. You know, that's what we're all about as coaches. You know, that's our number one job is to prepare these kids to, to become better versions of themselves and become young men, you know, quickly, because it, it happens fast, it happens fast. Now, what about life outside of basketball? I know you got a couple kids that probably keep your hands full, but, you know, how, do, how does your time get managed outside of basketball? Well, we have four now, and, and that's about it, and 14, 12, 9, and 6, and the six-year-old's going on 20, so you got your hands full there. My, what, what it takes is you have to have, um, you know, your, your significant other and Ashley, my wife, is, uh, does a heck of a job just managing everything and, and being the bus driver for those kids and running them around town and, um, you know, it'll help to get them into high school and they can drive themselves, but right now, you know, she's busy. Um, I have to go pick up kids here uh, as soon as I'm done with you um, in this interview and, and it's just nonstop. So, I mean, yeah, you, you have to be able to, to uh, you know, not bring any of that home sometimes, you know, coaching or teaching. Um, and just you got a job to do, and that's to be a, a dad, uh, be a husband, and that's that's your number one goal. And, and, and all this other stuff is just for fun, um, to make sure that you can take care of your family and to be a good husband and to be a good dad. And that's that's your number one job.